good job for you, 621. Yo, what is going on everybody? And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to defeat Ibis, aka IB01 cell 240. So this boss, extremely agile, super fast, likes to dodge a lot of your attacks, and has a striking resemblance to Melania from Elden Ring. Just look at this. From the wings, to the weapon, to how fast they move. I think From Software did this on purpose because they knew how hard of a boss this was, so they wanted to bring it back for Armored Core. Before we get into the fight, let's talk about how I came up with this build. Essentially, the boss moves so fast that I couldn't land hits with my original energy build. It was either I didn't do enough damage to stagger, I would run out of ammo, she was just evading every attack. So I thought to myself, how do you hit something that moves extremely fast. You wait for that split second of when it stops and try to do as much damage as you can as possible. So essentially a fly swatter build and that's how I came up with the name. So for this build, I'm going to be using a lot of explosive weapons. For the most part, you could use a lot of things that do high impact, but for me, it was a no-brainer to use explosives. And here you can kind of see my whole layout. We're going to go through each one. So let's go through the weapons first. On the right arm unit, we have the bazooka. It's a little bit lighter than the DFBA bazooka, and we can carry two of these. So, you know, just to keep it kind of the same, as you can tell from the demonstration video, it shoots pretty fast, which is what we want. You know, we don't want something to shoot and take forever to get to the target. We want to be able to shoot it and for it to do the damage quick. Like I said, you could probably mess around with some of these. As long as they do high impact, you're good. But for me, the bazooka seemed the best choice. Now let's go to the back units. The Stun Needler Launcher, aka the Anti-Ice Worm Gun. You use this in the mission to defeat it. And now we are going to use this to defeat Ibis. With this gun, we could carry two on the back and still not be overburdened. And look at the demonstration video. Look how fast it shoots. I feel like this would be a great gun for PvP as well. You could kind of be in the medium, short range, just launch this real quick, and then they're just going to get hit with massive amount of damage, and you're going to stagger them really fast. Now for the helmet, we're just using this one for high AP. A lot of these other ones don't also fit. See, EN shortfall, but we just went with this one. So now for the core. We're going with this one for high AP. It's also got pretty good part specs. And it fits in terms of like the weight, you know, with the load that we need. Just keep in mind, I don't claim to be an expert in building armored cores. All I know is I pick the parts and they seem to work for what I want. <laughs> you don't need to be an expert to build a good armored core, essentially. And now for the arms, DFAR09. So we have these for the AP and for the defensive performance as well. And you know, the weight is good. We could also carry heavier stuff with it. Just makes sense. See, firearm specialization goes up higher with this one, but we hit targets just fine as long as, you know, you're aiming and you're not just shooting it randomly while the enemy is moving really fast. Now for the legs. We need these right here, the DFLG. It's just like the, the arms. They're the same uh, set. We need these so we can carry these explosive weapons. See, you go on these other bipedal, it's not gonna work. So next thing, we go with the boosters here. So I went with this one because it has the highest thrust and quick boost thrust, which is going to help us evade some things. We are going to get tagged with a lot of attacks. We'll have a little bit of evasive maneuverability with this booster. So now the FCS. We went with this one because a lot of this fight is going to be in the medium range. You might be in long range just to avoid stuff, but generally you want to shoot your explosive shots in the medium to close range. Okay, so now for the generator, we're going with the DFGN. It seems like a lot of the parts I have are DFG. Also makes sense because, you know, they would work well with each other, right? But yeah, supply recovery is pretty good with this. And the weight doesn't overburden us. You go with anything else, E and shortfall. This one does have higher supply recovery, but we cannot fit it. And now the last thing, make sure you equip your expansion terminal armor. 
And that is it for that. Here's one last look if you wanted to see everything. And now let's go to the OST chips. So what I have is I have everything and repair kits optimization. I wanted to go more here. I just didn't have enough chips. And then I don't know exactly how many chips you're going to have when you get to this boss point. So just make sure that, you know, if you can't get the last one, just try to go at least to like three damage mitigation here. Pretty nice. I have access speed because I couldn't invest the last one in here. So I just put I threw it on access speed, which you don't need. I just did it anyway. Direct hit. You want to get this max. 15% direct hit, so we stagger quickly. And then when they're vulnerable, we're hitting them with an insane amount of damage. That's why we're able to kill things so fast with this build. Okay, now explosive weapons. Since that is the bread and butter of the build and the only damage we do, you want to max this out. And terminal armor, believe it or not, it has saved me in so many fights. I think out of everything here, this one is the most clutch. You don't have to press anything. You just kind of set and forget. And when your AP will fall to that zero, it will save you. It has saved me on multiple boss fights. So this thing is OP. And remember, don't forget to equip it. And that's basically it. So now let's get into the boss fight. The beginning of the fight is very important for this build because if you don't pull it off, you may struggle in the middle of it. So I'm going to show you exactly how to pull this off right in the beginning. Kind of boost a little upper left so that way you could dodge the opposite way and dodge that attack. And then right there, she's going to stand still for a few like a second or so and just get off every bullet. Look, I'm going to slow it down for you guys. So look, upper left, dodge the bullets. And then as soon as the slash comes, go the opposite way. She's going to be still right here. That's your opportunity. So look, I shoot both of my back units at the same time. And then bazookas go off one after another. And look at her health. Almost half of her health gone right in the beginning. So here's the air slashes. As soon as they come, just make sure you go the opposite direction. Same with that attack. As soon as she does it, just quick boost the opposite direction. And then just stay moving. Same with this one. As soon as it goes... Right here, I tanked a little bit because I knew she was going to stand still and I got some damage. And then if you're really lucky and you get really close, shoot both of the ice worm guns at the same time. And look at that. You could just get to second phase really quickly with this build. It's insane. Second phase is a little bit easier, I would say. But a lot of crazy stuff happens. She basically goes like beast mode. So I'm keeping my distance here, just trying to move away from these laser attacks that the drones are doing. If you get hit a little bit, it's not that big of a deal, but right there, you saw how I got close, shot both of my back units, and then we did a lot of damage to her. Look, essentially almost half her health. So I'm keeping my distance. Oh, this is the beginning move. So... Right after she does that air slash, she's vulnerable. And now look at her health. I wanted to put this part because sometimes she doesn't do it when I fight her. But look, vertical strike, kind of like a lashing. And I didn't dodge it in time, so I got hit. This move, I'm not sure how you dodge that. Maybe you go up in the air. And then here is the move that hurts. Ooh, look how much damage that did to my health. I quick boosted up in the air. And then just get that last shot off and you win the fight. Dang. So if you want to kill Mechlania Blade of Coral, then use this build to get it done. That's going to be the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I just wanted to help new players out with this build to get it done so you can progress through the story. Once you beat this boss, it is essentially smooth sailing. You could beat the rest of the game with this build. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.
enemy coral response. Silent. Wait. It's coming back. It's reactivating. Is this what the Ibis series is truly capable of? It's resonating with the enemy coral, drawing power from its environment. Two repair kits remaining. go yes dude let's fucking go a fucking explosive build oh my god yes let's go